Okay, video number three, basic typesetting. I'm just gonna delete this graphic block object. We're just gonna work purely with a block of placeholder text and a randomly placed text object on the page. And I'm just gonna use lorem ipsum text here. So let's just fill this page with lorem ipsum. Right click. So there we go, there's a bunch of text that we can kind of work with. So right, up, right out of the gate, nothing customized yet. Character styles, none. Paragraph styles, basic paragraph. So basic paragraph is by default. It's the first thing, if you don't have any other style applied to an object, that's the type style that's gonna get applied. You might as well use it. You might as well customize it to, to your style. You know, by default for me, the default font is Minion Pro Regular at 12 point with 14.4 type letting. That's the default Adobe Illustrator type set. Um, chances are that is not what you want to use. Uh, 12 point type is actually pretty big um, for most magazines and brochures and stuff. It's pretty rare that you'll see body copy at 12 point. Um, it looks kind of small on screen, but again, you're, you're seeing it small because this isn't really a 8.5 by 11. It's a little smaller. My This screen that I'm using for this class actually is close to one to one. It's about 80% of real size. But just it's easy to kind of make your type a little bit too big when you're first new to Adobe InDesign because you're not used to uh, you're not used to thinking about the fact that it will come out bigger. So when you're kind of getting used to doing typesetting, you're just getting practiced at designing type styles. Print it out. Hit it. Hit your printer. Kind of print it out. See how big it looks. Look for legibility. Compare to other magazines. Look at the spacing between the paragraphs. All these types of things. Those are going to help you improve your, your typesetting pretty quickly. So the very first thing we want to do when we start to get into designing our basic paragraph styles is we want to understand how there's these things called hidden characters, which we actually always want to be seeing. So you go to the type menu, show hidden characters. So what do we see when we look at basic hidden characters? Let's zoom in close so you can see. You get a paragraph okay so this is a paragraph marker paragraph break and spaces so probably the first thing that's probably the most obvious sort of new person to Adobe InDesign thing that just kind of points out that they're just learning it is that they're doing things like putting empty paragraph breaks in place um, to to make more space so say you're like well I want more I want spaces between my paragraphs I don't like these tight paragraphs so I'm going to go through and hammer in some extra paragraph breaks that's actually a not not how we do it paragraph breaks only really exist to tell InDesign what style to apply to everything that came before it, or essentially between the two paragraph breaks so from here to here this has a paragraph block and it's always right now by default basic paragraph okay so we don't want to be using empty paragraph breaks also you can do what's called a line break okay so that's holding down shift and hitting the enter key so that is not a paragraph break it's just it just breaks the line and there are places where we need to use that if we want to kind of control how our types flowing or whatever but out of the gate we don't want to be using any of these characters to format our space and we do that all with our paragraph styles so paragraph styles just like they sound applies to the whole block everything between that marker and this one so let's go modify our basic paragraph. Let's look at what our options are. So we can double click on our paragraph style, which is gonna bring up the paragraph style options. You know, your general paragraph style, this based on thing, you can sort of daisy chain together multiple paragraph styles. So you can sort of have a master paragraph style that then uses, you know, the, if you modify it, shared elements are going to then reflect through all of your paragraph styles. So let's say you want to do a whole bunch of different paragraph styles all based on one font set, but you want a different sizes and spacing. That's that's a pretty common thing to do. But I'm just setting my very basic body paragraph. I've got nothing to base it on, so I can't choose any paragraph style. And you typically want next style to be the same style because that means, well, when you hit enter to put in a new block, it's going to apply the same style. So these are, you pretty much leave these alone all the time. But there are definite times to not use those. So let's go to basic paragraph format. Pretty much out of the gate. First thing I'm going to do is choose a new font. 
I don't know, let's try this Noto Sans. I don't really know what it looks like. But I can see now because I've got my preview turned on. Kind of changes there. All right, good. Like I said, 12 points, quite large. Let's get that down to something a little more usual, like 8 point. Just going to keep it regular. Now the letting, that's the space between each line. So if you're feeling that that's a little tight, I mean, it doesn't look bad. Your default letting is it's essentially what they call auto-fitting which is based off the percentage of your point size, but you can override that, make it a little bigger if you like. Kind of looks a little bit too big to me there, but whatever. Set something like 11 point. So kerning, you know, that's your metrics. This is your kerning and tracking is your spacing between your letters and your words. So you can, you know, mess with that a little bit and see how it looks if you want. I will often set my default tracking to something like minus 10. It tends to just give me a little bit of room to get rid of funny line breaks and widows and stuff like that by extending the tracking at the time, but most of the time you can leave it to zero. It's really up to you. And then your kerning, it's going to change the way that works using optical metrics or none. So none doesn't really, depends on the font primarily, but you know, metrics works a little different in terms of how the visual optical. So I'm kind of, it depends on the font, like I say, it depends on what I'm doing, but it's not going to make a ton of difference. You can always go back and change it later. So those are your basics, okay? Uh, picking the case type, normal, small caps, all caps. Leave lig ligatures on. You can also change to superscript or subscript. But, you know, for our basic, you know, basic paragraph, we don't want to get into that. We want to pretty much leave these alone. This is our go-to body copy. Uh, I'm not going to mess around with any of these things. Kind of recommend you don't, but there are definitely cases where you might want to in more advanced styles, but certainly for a basic one, not. Okay, indents and spacing. So this is really common to want to go in and just do this a little bit. You know, if you want to be really, really strict, if you give yourself a, a really strict fine grid, which we'll get into in another video, you could align this type to the grid, but it's going to limit you quite a bit. So for the most part, I would leave align to grid to none, okay? Left alignment is default, but also we see left justify pretty commonly. Left justify just is going to give you a really crisp line. It's going to line everything up within your text boxes, so it's a little more rigid looking. So if that's your style, then that's what you want. So just being aware of how you use those things, but let's just go basic left. I tend to say balance ragged lines. It just it gives you more white space, but it does break your, your paragraph sometimes in a bit of a way that feels a little bit odd. So a lot of times, instead of losing this, I'm just going to leave that alone, and I'm going to make my decision in each case by putting in a line break versus defining it in the style. You know, you can choose the amount of indenting depending on what your case is for this, but basics, we're going to leave that alone. So a common, really common thing in paragraph spacing is to indent the first line of each paragraph. So you'll notice on the right hand in my demo there, each paragraph block, that's putting in that space. That's quite common as a style to sort of define your paragraphs. But also so is space before, which put space before that paragraph and then you can also do space after you can kind of sort of combine those two things to create visual blocks that are a little bit bigger than your than your letting and that's really pretty common um, to to give your your typography more of a little bit more room to breathe make the paragraphs a little easier to spot I'm a big fan of using space after and space before my typography but um, sometimes just a first line indent is all you want. It really comes down to density and how much content you got to deal with. But as a basic font, that's or basic paragraph style, pretty good thing to get going. Um, space between paragraphs using the same style. Um, ignore, right? So you can then, you could kind of say, well, you know, space after or whatever, I'm going to add some more space to that. There's cases for that basic case, leave it alone. Tabs, we're not going to worry about that. In fact, everything below here, we're really not going to need to mess around with. This is more specialized styles, but just getting out of the gate, keeping it basic. Hyphenation, turn this off. I wish Adobe InDesign would leave hyphenation off by default. Hyphenation rarely has a space anymore in digital typesetting. 
it's kind of a hangover from you know lead based type where you couldn't really move stuff around it, it hyphenation doesn't have much logical place in in modern typesetting but some people just kind of like them it's there's lots of rules so i just turn hyphenation off there's rare rare cases where hyphenation makes any sense unless i'm doing like some kind of big scientific journal where there's tons of super long words or whatever and even then i can't really think that there's a good good excuse to use hyphenation so you turn that off so we get into character color but you know if you do want to default your paragraph colors but most of the time if we're going to change the color of our type we're going to use a character style not a paragraph style paragraphing is more about spacing and tabs blocking in general uh, when you get into things like colors and font styles and whatever that's what character styling is for so I tend to leave my character color to the default black, um, but there can be cases for that for sure. So that's basic paragraph style. Hit OK. Now basic paragraph is going to default to that every time you create a new text block. So now we say, OK, well, I want to make a new type of paragraph that's called a heading, let's say. New paragraph style. Heading. And let's say I want to base it on my body paragraph, basic paragraph, and then I want my next style to be basic paragraph because the heading is typically going to lead to body copy afterwards. This is just real basic, right? But I want to make the bold italic and I want to make it 12 point, okay? So because I had this paragraph selected, it's just kind of previewing randomly this header style. So let's just make that real big. And maybe I'm going to change the space after to be less. Okay, and I don't want my first line indented. So let's turn those all off. So as a header style, that is now based on my basic paragraph. And again, we're going to hyphenation should be turned off because I based it on basic paragraph, so that's good. So let's say this was the heading. So now I can go in and apply heading right and say so make this a heading let's do that and it's like okay but this heading I want it to be a different color so do I go in and just change the color to whatever I want you know yeah I'm, I'm allowed I, InDesign does let me do that but that's called an override and it's okay it's not the end of the world it's just that it just means that whenever you now make a change to that style the related change that you make is going to get overridden because it's got an override applied to it. So we kind of want to avoid that whenever we possibly can. So we're just going to clear the overrides by clicking the clear override button. There's a, I think there's also one up here. Yeah, if there's overrides applied. And you can actually highlight overriding because it's, it's something that can kind of easily happen that we do want to avoid it. So you kind of want to highlight it so you can go through and fix it. But there's places that using an override is totally reasonable so I wouldn't sweat it too much. But now I'm saying, well, okay, I like my headings, but I want to be able to change the color. Well, that's what character styles are all about. So I'm going to make a new character style. Okay, so it's going to, it's going to apply. It's going to pick up whatever style elements. And it looks quite similar. You'll just notice that there's no spacing and stuff like that because it isn't based on the paragraph block. It's just based on the type that you've selected. Okay, so let's just... I'm going to leave the font and everything alone. I'm not going to change anything. The only thing I want to change is I just want to make it magenta. So let's grab the basic magenta. Okay. I might want to apply underlines or whatever, but that's pretty much it. I just want to change the color. So that's fine. So I'm just going to call this character style magenta. Okay. So now because it's not related to the paragraph, it's not over it's not counting as an override because I've applied a character style to work with my paragraph style. So colors, font weight changes, these types of things. That's why I use a character style. If I go none, I can also then just grab just part of it. I could let's say I just want to highlight a couple of words in that character style. So I can do that. I can do that in line without applying any overrides or whatever. And as well, if I make a change, say I've used this through a big document and I want to say, well, you know what, that magenta, I'm going to want to replace that with Pantone 188, let's say. And let's say we just put it in a couple of places. Let's apply it here. So I can go through and 
double click to edit it, go to my character color, change it to Pantone 188, and now everywhere that I've used it, it is now going to globally reflect throughout my document. So that's essentially why we want to, to use character styles. Instead of just going in and using these drop menus, which would be just called inline styling, styles just allow us to consistently make changes. So it just gives us more flexibility if we're working with a big amount of text, like a big article. You don't want to go through and manually style up all your text. You sort of want to go through, apply your block styles, and then then modify accordingly or make versions of them like that. So as well, the last kind of piece here on just typographic styling is that because we based our heading on basic paragraph, let's say we change our mind about the base font that we want to typeset this whole thing. We've decided that I don't want to use Noto Sans. I want to use Oswald just randomly, let's say. Okay, so that goes through and carries that to my multiple styles that have all carried that along, right? That's now going to apply. But you see this highlight here? That's because Oswald doesn't have the heading weight that I had applied. So I then need to go and redefine my basic character because bold italic doesn't exist for Oswald. So I need to pick something like demi bold or whatever. Something that's within the font family. I'll use heavy in this case. Okay, so that that's what that highlighting means. If you see that, it's like, well, yeah, we, we can use the base font, but we're missing a substyle. So you gotta be, you kinda wanna watch that. But that's what it's all about, is being able to change your basic font style and have every, every linked style that's based on it reflect that change. So let's say it's like, well, what was wrong with me wanting to use Oswald? I want Open Sans. Okay, so same thing, semi-bold, uh, that demi doesn't apply. So I just gotta go back and redefine my heading here and pick a font that actually has. Oh. Now, interestingly enough, there was called bold, but I guess the way it was defined just wasn't recognized. So you're gonna run into issues with fonts and we'll talk about the technicalities of fonts a little later when we get into slightly more advanced decisions in, in picking your styles. But this is just working with basic typography and, and paragraphs. So there's lots of options that we can get into, but this is just meant to be the basics, understanding the, the point of paragraph styles and character styles and how they work together. And uh, that pretty much covers it for basic typography. The next video that we're going to do, which was covered in class one, is working with guides, grids, and understanding what this bleed area is all about. And that'll be the uh, last video for this first section.